Hello and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. Today we've got a very interesting case to discuss. Um, the very first thing that I want to show you is the imaging. Imaging is a gross neuropathology where we're uh, looking at the uh, relationship between lesions uh, throughout the brain. Uh, we can't look at the, um, the brain of a living person but we can look at the next best thing, which is the imaging finding. So let's take a look at these imaging. Uh, this is a DWI, uh, and we can see that there are multiple lesions within this brain. Here, uh, this is the thalamus here, and here is the basal ganglia. We can see that there's multiple lesions distributed throughout this brain. And if we scroll through this brain, we can see that there's a, a large lesion right here in the uh, uh, right occipital cortex. And when we notice, when we uh, kind of skim through the imaging on this brain, we can see that there are uh, uh, quite a few uh, scattered lesions throughout the brain. Here's another one right here. So whenever we have a brain that has multiple lesions, one thing that you want to consider is metastasis, uh, and the other one that you want to consider is infection. Um, so for this patient, uh, this patient was found to have a um, positive HIV test and uh, with a very high viral load. And so with that context, he was a young person, he didn't have any other lesions anywhere else in the body, um, but he has these multiple scattered lesions throughout the brain with a positive HIV. Um, so in the context of HIV, we want to think about a wide variety of infectious processes, but also uh, CNS lymphoma. So those are some of the things that we want to think about. This is the DWI. DWI highlights uh, areas of the brain that have a very highly uh, hypercellular density to them. So things that are positive uh, or, or bright on the DWI uh, tend to be lesions that are very, very cellular. So this could be uh, infection, this could be a dense inflammation, um, and then there are certain uh, uh, tumors that are, are very um, densely cellular, things like medulloblastoma would be an example. So for this patient, in the case of HIV, um, uh, he had multiple uh, scattered lesions. Here we can see that there are lesions uh, in both the right and uh, left hemispheres. Uh, and in addition, we can see that there's a large lesion right here in the, uh, in the right occipital lobe, which on our screen is on the left side. Um, and so a lot of these multiple uh, small nodules had somewhat of a targetoid appearance on the post contrast um, uh, with a little bit of a, uh, and in this lesion, it's a little bit of an eccentric uh, type appearance, but a lot of these uh, lesions had a targetoid appearance. And so that is very characteristic for the, um, the lesion that we're going to talk about. So let's take a look at the pathology. Uh, for this patient, uh, he was very symptomatic and he had a lot of symptoms that were associated with this uh, lesion uh, here in the right occipital lobe. So um, the, the surgeon went in to get a definitive biopsy. Again, if this was a CNS lymphoma, uh, that treatment is gonna be very different from uh, if this is an infectious process. Um, and so the surgeon went in and did a biopsy just to make sure that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So let's take a look at the path. All right, so this is a low power view uh, and there were large areas of necrosis and an in, in, in infarction type pattern. Um, in the top left corner of the screen and the top right corner of the screen, we can see that there's a lot of inflammation and this is a higher power view of that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, neutrophils, lymph uh, lymphocytes, um, uh, macrophages, plasma cells. Um, in the less involved areas of the brain, there were uh, there was a lot of uh, proliferative activity. So we've got um, uh, mitosis here. This is a, a, a typical mitosis, and then this is a granular mitosis. the The blood vessels were very interesting, though. Um, and so this is a vasculitis where you can see that there's uh, inflammation uh, involving the, the blood vessels. 
But then as we start to uh, look around a little bit more, there are these, um, this is a little bit of a higher power view, but this is a microglial nodule here. And then we can see more microglial nodules here. Um, and if, if you look really closely, you can start to see that there are these little dots here and little dots here and little dots here and little dots here. Um, and, and, and I'll go back through some of the pictures that I just showed you and there are a lot of these little dot looking guys that if you weren't looking for them you could just kind of glance right over them. And these are, uh, these are very morphologically compatible with tachyzoites. Uh, I didn't see any bradyzoites. This actually is a great one right here. I didn't see any bradyzoites, uh, which is kind of more like the uh, encysted form. Um, uh, that's kind of the more dormant form. So this is a very active infection where all we have are uh, these morphologic findings of, of tachyzoites. This is, the, uh, this is the patient's result. All of these brown um, little dots here are tachyzoites and, and, uh, uh, and the Toxoplasma uh, gondii organism. So this is a very, very active inflammation. Usually when you see toxo, it, it's usually like maybe one or two positive in, in, in a high power field. But this is many, many, many in a low power field. So this is a very um, uh, uh, exuberant uh, infectious process. Okay, so now I would like to go through with you uh, the appearance of this toxoplasmosis on immunohistochemistry. Um, so this is an example of immunohistochemistry that we can see right here. Uh, all of these little brown dots here, uh, this is all um, organisms. Uh, so this is a very active, avid infection uh, that is uh, uh, diffusely involving uh, this area of the brain. If we continue through, we can notice that uh, in the areas that have these uh, uh, blood vessels that are away from the areas of necrosis where we have these viable blood vessels, the uh, toxoplasmosis, they, um, uh, they like to involve the blood vessels. And we can see that here. Uh, these guys right here and right here, these are blood vessels, and we can see that the uh, uh, that there is a lot of these brown spots, which is organisms, uh, here in and around the vessel. Um, and this is one of the reasons why, and we can see that here as well, here's a vessel, and then here are organisms that are uh, very much uh, um, uh, like to be in and around the blood vessels. So we can see this, uh, we can see the effects of this um, in the rest of the brain that had a lot of necrosis, it had a lot of uh, this infarction type necrosis. And one of the reasons for that is because the organisms, they really like to get within the vessel walls. Um, and so that is uh, not good for the vessel and uh, the vessels will oftentimes kind of close off. Uh, they might have thrombosis. Uh, they, they might get something called an obliterative arteritis, all of it, which results in um, a occlusion of the blood vessel. And so when the blood vessel becomes occluded, it's not able to uh, feed the downstream tissues with oxygen and nutrients. Um, and so an, another of these examples here is the blood vessel in negative relief here, here, and here. And we've got all of these organisms that are lighting up on the uh, uh, immunohistochemistry in and around the blood vessels. And that is what is responsible for uh, uh, the large regions of necrosis that we see on histology microscopically. Um, but we can also see evidence of that necrosis on imaging, uh, where uh, centrally the, the DWI was um, uh, not really all that accentuated, but along the rim uh, we have this en uh, enhancement and uh, increased um, uh, signal on the DWI, and that is associated with the inflammation of the organisms surrounding this area of central necrosis, which is caused by the uh, the, the vasculitis and the endarteritis obliterans. Okay, so that is our whirlwind tour of the imaging and the pathology of toxoplasmosis. Uh, toxoplasmosis is a parasite where the definitive host is the cat. 
uh, and people can become infected by handling cat litter. Toxoplasmosis is one of the torch infections, and I have a uh, video on torch infections, so be sure to check that out. Uh, toxoplasmosis is one of the torch infections, uh, and those are infections that, um, that affect babies within the womb. And so if a baby within the womb gets toxoplasmosis, it causes some serious damage. Um, but adults with uh, certain immunosuppressive diseases or immunocompromised diseases, uh, they can also get toxoplasmosis. So for this patient, he had very uh, severe disease um, that was associated, uh, that was occurring in the setting of a very high HIV viral load. HIV can cause a number of different problems when it comes to infections because the way that the virus works is it infects uh, one of the inflammatory cells that is a CD4 positive lymphocyte that is involved in the uh, immune system. So basically the way that the virus works is it, it, it inhibits your immune system from responding, from, uh, uh, responding to uh, the usual infectious insults that you come across on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so uh, these patients will oftentimes have some significant issues with infectious disease, toxoplasmosis being one of them. So toxoplasmosis in the brain, uh, it can form multiple lesions like what we're seeing here, or it can form one lesion that can be confused for uh, abscess or CNS lymphoma, that sort of thing. Um, and so oftentimes these, pa these patients will need a biopsy in order to differentiate toxo versus uh, CNS lymphoma because those two run uh, hand in hand uh, together with uh, patients with HIV. Okay. Okay, so that's it for today. Please check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our website, Adventures in Neuropathology. I'll see you on our next adventure.